Ad Astra Abyssosk, welcome to the Adventurous Guild. 
thank you for completing today's commissions. Here is your reward. Rebooting. into destiny. Glass hazy. Huh? 
Adventure time!
adventure time! Teamwork is dreamwork! Too late for regrets! Here's the best. 
is not bad today. Oh crud, I jinxed it. Now it's bound to rain. Come to those who don't wait around.
just keeps getting more better.
Let me scry. Surprise! Truly an extra slice of joy!
A good newspaper should be a lighthouse of truth. A good newspaper should be a lighthouse of truth.
Even though most of the Academia's restrictions have significantly relaxed, I'm still a bit worried that the Matra might give her trouble. I need to stay here to keep an eye on the situation. Kale, can you head to Sumeru City and find out why she isn't here yet? Um, does it have to be me? I'd only assign a job this important to someone I trust. Are you not feeling well? Oh no, I'm fine! I've completely recovered! It's just that if I'm going to see her... Um... I think I need to mentally prepare myself first. <sighs> I know, I know. You'll have a tough time if you go by yourself. If we could arrange for someone to accompany you... It's been a while. What a coincidence. I was just thinking about asking you to accompany Kale to Sumeru City. Sorry, that's not what I meant. It's just that this matter concerns research banned by the Academia. Not the sort of thing you'd shout from the rooftops. Also, you happen to know about this situation. There are very few people I can trust to be discreet right now. After giving it much thought, I believe you're the most suitable person for this task. It's complicated, and this isn't the best place to talk about it. We'll fill you in on the details once she arrives. You might have heard about her in Sumeru before. Her name is Farazan, and she's a very experienced senior researcher. Let's just say that a huge part of Kasharawar's mechanical research over the past 100 years has used her academic discourse and manuscripts as their foundation. She is, but she vanished for a hundred years because of a certain incident. She only returned to the academia after being found in the wilderness a few years ago. Because of that, her current personality can be a bit... Uh, strange, as is her attitude towards Kale. Mm, I'm getting a headache just thinking about it. She doesn't have bad intentions, so you don't have to be scared. Uh, I'll try. <sighs> yes. Kasharawar and Spontamod researchers are often quite prejudiced, so I can't trust them with this matter. However, Farazan isn't influenced by modern thinking. In our previous correspondence through letters, she indicated that she'd be willing to help. It's already past our arranged meeting time, but she still hasn't shown up. I don't think so. With her personality, it's more likely that she got wrapped up in some sort of trouble. Anyway, can you go with Kale to the Academia and check on Farazan for me? <sighs> Thank goodness. I was so anxious. I'm counting on you two. Uh, Kale, don't push yourself too hard. Just go there and see what's going on. Our task is important, but not that urgent. If Farazan really is in some trouble, Come back and tell me about it. We can always reschedule our meeting. After all, if she's distracted by other things, it'll affect her ability to help us. All right, let's go! Oh yes, and one more thing. You might find her... difficult to get along with at first. However, if you address her as Madam, she'll become much easier to talk to. Sorry, what did you say? Oh, could you repeat yourself? 
as you know, I'm sure. Hearing goes with age. Farzan, I said that you need to give us an answer. Ah, yes. And did you forget to add Madam when you addressed me earlier? Your hearing is perfectly fine. <clears throat> Madam, Farzan, we don't want to make things difficult for you. However, you haven't been teaching courses or supervising theses these past few years. Isn't this rather problematic as an advisor? Never mind the students, even other advisors are starting to complain. And who, if I may ask, complained? If they have any issue with me, tell them to talk to me themselves rather than waste any of your time. Um... <laughs> you don't have to tell me anything. I very well know that it's those people from Haravatat. How I wish they'd put their time into doing proper research instead. But, Madame Farzan, it has been a long while since you last made any practical academic contribution yourself. Uh... Ahem. <clears throat> academic contribution cannot simply be divided between the tangible and the intangible. The issue here, I believe, is that the, the reviewer doesn't understand the very nature of knowledge itself. In any case, it makes no sense to use a metric like this to evaluate a mentor. Which sage set this rule anyway? I should write a letter of complaint right this instant! Wait! Madame Farzan, please let me finish! That's her, all right. But the person with her doesn't look like a matra. Shh! She hates it when people call her young! Her body apparently stopped aging during the year she was gone. So that's why she looks the same as she did a hundred years ago. <sighs> okay, I think I'm ready for this. Let's go! Anyway, Akara Crafts and the leader of Kisharawar would like to invite you to collaborate on this project. They're wondering if you'd be interested. Uh, Madame Farzan? Are you listening? Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, Kale! Why are you here at the Academia? Are you feeling better now? I'm m much better, Madame Farzan. <laughs> it's all thanks to the Traveler and the Dendro Archon. Have you been sleeping well? You seem to be developing some eye bags. Is that brat Tainari forcing you to stay up late again? No, it's because I'm a slow learner. It's not Master's fault. It's good to be hardworking, but you need to take care of your health. I'll have to give Tainari a right talking to when I see him. I'll also prepare some health supplements for you. Uh, there's really no need. Ah, and is the person beside you the legendary traveler? Oh, I've heard much about you before. In fact, I've been meaning to meet you for a while now. It is thanks to you, after all, that the Academia is finally getting back on its feet. Even Kali's illness is... Ahem. <clears throat> Madame Farzan, I believe we were still discussing the collaboration with Akara Crafts. <laughs> I'd wager it's those Kasharwar Dunderheads finding excuses so that I'd go to their Darshan. Say no more. I have no plans to change my field of research. <sighs> if you're this unwilling to participate in the collaborative project, you can also consider teaching a class. It might be difficult to teach a course with topics that only fall within Haravatat's subjects, but we can't delay this anymore. You need to give an answer. You can teach a course or participate in a collaborative project. If you don't do either, it'll be hard for me to persuade the advisors and students who have been complaining. Could you not give me a few more days to consider? This matter has been delayed for so long already. That's precisely the issue. If you don't give an answer today, I fear that someone will soon escalate their complaints to the sages. What a waste of free time these folks are. Now you two are here at Tainari's behest, I take it. I'm sorry, but given the current situation, it looks like I'll have to come over some other day. Um... Of course. I shall need some time to think as well. What now? 
She seems so busy. Master said there's no rush, but I know that he's been busy working on something at Pardis DI, so he hasn't returned to Gandarverville for several days now. I feel for Madame Farazan, but I still want to ask her to come with us. But if I get her in trouble with the Academia, then she won't have the time to help Master! What should I do? Oh, this is such a headache. But if someone does complain to the Academia, wouldn't it make Farazan's situation more awkward? And if the Academia investigated and found her at Party's DI, things would get even worse for her! Do you have some way to invite her over to Party's DI without stepping on the Academia's toes? Okay then, I'm counting on you. <laughs> I have to teach students from Haravatat or Okasharawar a favor. It strikes me that they might be even less happy about such a deal than I am. <laughs> I think I can sympathize with them. Madam Farzan, we're back! <laughs> Sorry for asking again, but are you sure you can't go to parties DI today? <sighs> well, since you're asking me so sincerely, let's just ignore the academia and... Please, Madam Farzan, focus! Today's the deadline. Huh? Ah, ah, yes. I see, I see. No wonder he sent you two over. Why, that lad didn't make it very clear in his letter, now did he? Otherwise, I would have reported it as part of my research. Uh, yeah, yeah! That's right! Master sent this over to explain everything to you. Wait... Opportunities for collaborative research don't just come out of thin air. This seems like too much of a coincidence. Also, there isn't much overlap between Madame Farazan's research and that of Amorta, right? What will you even be collaborating on? Uh... Master wants to research, uh... A fully automated irrigation system. A fully automated irrigation system? Precisely. Um, it's a system that can automatically adjust the amount of water it provides based on the season and the plant species involved. I saw a similar mechanism while exploring a rune in the rainforest. That's why Tainari wanted to collaborate with me. A mechanism like that exists? Why haven't I heard of it before? I, uh, I found it a hundred years ago, so it's only natural that you don't know about it. Why don't you go ask your teacher's teacher? Perhaps they've heard about it from their teacher. Uh, but we can't prove its existence one way or the other, right? Fret not. I'll have Tainari write an official proposal to the Academia later. That should do it, right? An official proposal. <sighs> Fine. We haven't made any progress with either the collaborative project or the elective course anyway. I'll go inform my superiors now. Please do take care of the paperwork as soon as possible. Don't delay this any longer. Sure. I'll be sure to needle him until he gets it done. Phew. I think she bought it. Even though this is our first meeting, I must say, we make a good team. Wow! You made up that excuse on the spot, huh? Um, Madame Farazan, did you really find an irrigation system a hundred years ago? Uh, if the Academia asks for any details... Who knows? It's been a hundred years, so it wouldn't be too surprising if I've forgotten a few details, no? Huh? Uh, then how will we explain things to them? <laughs> I'll let Tainari worry about whatever documents we might need to send to the Academia. If I'm right, the request he has in store for me won't be any simpler than the Academia nonsense. Master! 
You don't have to shout. I can hear you. Well, you got here much faster than I expected. I thought you'd have a lot more business to take care of. Thanks to the Traveler, I was able to, uh, pawn off various problems of mine onto others. Onto others? What does that mean? Uh, we, we can discuss that later. You're looking for me because of the thing you mentioned in the letter, right? Uh, that's right. Uh, please follow me. Be scared, Kale. This is the mechanical life form the Traveler and I saved a while back. Its name is Karkata. It's the final work of a late junior of mine. You mean Abatui? He must have been a genius to create one of such polish all by himself. It's uncommon that a Spantamod researcher is able to create such an intricate machine. If he were still around, we could probably chat the day away. <sighs> what a shame. Hmm... Something seems wrong here. Have you been maintaining it? Mechanical life forms are much more fragile than they look. Uh, is... Karkata... sick? Karkata has been lying down like this since a few days ago. It could be an old malfunction acting up again. I've taken a few courses conducted by Spontamod before, so I've managed to perform some... Passable repairs on Karkata's energy supply module. However, it seems the issue this time is with its transmission. My knowledge can only prevent its condition from deteriorating any further. But, Madame Farazan, you should be able to find a way to repair it. Not necessarily. Mechanical life forms are created using techniques from alchemy, elemental science, and more. There are multiple modules here that influence each other. A simplistic knowledge of mechanisms will not serve here. You know that as well. Each mechanical life form is very different from the next. So even I cannot be sure if my understanding of mechanical life forms is going to be of any use to our little crab friend here. Oh, Karkata. <sighs> Can you all go outside for a minute? I need a bit of space. Before I do a thorough check, everything we've just said is but conjecture. All right. We're counting on you, Madame Farazan. could get sick too. You have to get better soon, Karkata! We'll wait here till Farazan finishes her inspection. In the meantime, I'd like to talk to you about her. Her past, huh? Quite a few people in the academia know about what happened to her. Perhaps it'd be best if I'm the one to tell you. I've told you before that she had disappeared for a hundred years, right? Uh, from her perspective, trapped might be a more apt description. Her exact words were... That ruin was crawling with traps and coded inscriptions from wall to wall. I 
did all I could to decipher the code and deactivate the traps to escape the ruin, but there was no way out. I lost track of time, and I ran out of pen and paper. In the end, I had to use stone shards to write on the walls and on the floor to decipher the code. Then, before I realized it, I ran out of space on the walls and floor. I had to calculate all the possibilities in my mind. After that, my memory started to become fuzzy, and my cognition slowed down. She doesn't remember anything else, including the location of the ruin and how she finally managed to escape. When she was found in the outskirts of Sumeru a few years ago, she looked exactly the same as she did a hundred years prior. However, she was in a stupor and struggled to form sentences. Only after a lengthy recovery period could she speak again. The Academia speculates that she must have gotten trapped in an unknown ruin while researching machines a century ago. And because of the ruin's special properties that halted her aging, she was able to use those 100 years to crack the trapping mechanism and then escape. Though she had finally broken free, 100 years had passed. Everyone she knew and everyone who knew her was already gone. In the end, even the Academia had to rely on century-old records in the Akasha to confirm her existence. Don't make that face. I'm not telling you this because I want to drum up sympathy. She wouldn't want others to pity her because of past events. Rather, she sees that period of entrapment as an experimental error. As a researcher, she must accept everything that results from her experiments, even if they don't fall within expectations. Even after going through so much, She's returned to Sumeru, and still hasn't given up on her research. Due to changes over the years, and drift in academic subjects, she holds some rather strong opinions about the current academia, and she has no shortage of detractors herself. What I want to say is that no matter what era we're in, Farazan is a true senior researcher, in every sense of the word. She has her own deep understanding of various ruins and machines, if there's a chance, you should talk about them with her. It'll definitely be helpful for your journey. Master! Madame Farazan's done! Oh, let's head over. With any luck, she might have figured something out. <sighs> I never thought that I'd encounter a restitution module once again after a hundred years. Abitui really installed quite a few impressive things on this. If my guess is correct, this mechanical life form has displayed attempts at self-sustenance before, right? Such as collecting parts to repair itself, for instance? It used them for something else, but as far as its design goes, it does have a function like that. I knew it. If I'm not wrong, Karkata's issue lies with its restitution module. Abatui's modified this module extensively, but the core parts and design philosophy are very similar to the principles as I know them. They are all based on principles learned from the ruins. The creators of the ruins machine once tried to create a perpetual mechanism that could replace life or even surpass it. The restitution module is the result of one of their countless attempts. It replicates the behavior of living things to achieve a self-repair function, However, the energy required in maintenance of the module became an issue. Uh... Energy consumption? Maintenance? For example, a living thing's heart can deliver nutrients and blood to various organs. However, the bigger the living thing, the more powerful the heart needs to be. Once the heart is damaged, it'll be hard for that living thing to heal itself, and even the function of other organs can be affected. Thus, the attempt wasn't widely adopted. Even a hundred years ago, I'd only seen it once before. Oh dear, this is going to be a problem. Based on my current research, I'll need to swap out the damaged parts in the restitution module to repair Karkata. But like I just said, the module is rare, even by the standards of ancient machines. Not only that, but there is very little related research documentation available. Finding suitable parts would be like trying to find a single gear in the vast desert, 
to say nothing of the difficulty in making those parts from scratch. <sighs> One can only wonder where Abatui found the original parts. I might have an idea. Abatui was, for a time, quite passionate about excavating the Great Red Sand. This was when he had just gotten expelled from the Academia. You mean to say he found a restitution module in the desert? Hmm... Oh, that is indeed possible. But the desert's huge! How are we supposed to find the parts that Karkata needs? According to the Academia's records, no similar parts have been found in the Great Red Sand over the past hundred years. If we want to try our luck, we'll have to explore ruins that have never been explored before. I do know that a Vahumana researcher formed an expedition team after the sandstorms and earthquakes subsided. They are now exploring areas of the desert that used to be difficult to access. Should we ask them if they've made any new discoveries lately? The chances are slim, but it's at least more effective than running around like headless chickens. His name is Raid. I think he's stationed at the northeast part of the Hypostyle Desert. Let's go look for him once Karkata settles down. Oh, you and Kale should probably stay. Karkata's condition may be stable, but it would still be better if some of us stay to look after it. Besides, you still need to take care of the trouble that the Academia left for me. Trouble from the Academia? I thought you said that you pawned it off to someone else. Uh, wait. Uh, don't tell me. <laughs> I'll let Kale fill you in on the details. I look forward to seeing your work, Tainari. A fully automated irrigation system. <laughs> That's quite the task. Master, can I help with anything at all? I can go buy things, prepare pen and paper. Oh, you know, I seem to remember that you have a lot of homework today. Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. I do. Well, hurry up and finish it so you can sleep early, or Farazan will worry. That's the best thing you can do now to help. Oh, okay. Halt! Mr. Raid's permission is required to proceed any further. That still won't do. Mr. Raid told us to keep people away from the ruins so they don't damage the site. Damage the site? I've excavated more ruins than you've visited restaurants! Which batch of students is Raid from? I want to see him right now! He isn't at the campsite now. You should all leave. Only he can give you permission to enter. What a stubborn guy. Hmm, you're right. Even if there is new information, we still have to wait for him to come back so we can ask him about it. So let's just see what we can find out from the people here. Hm. I'm going to give that Raid a good talking to when he gets back. Starting from who in the world mentored you. Ah! 
That machine looks amazing. Could it be the legendary Ruin Wanderer? The location seems to fit too. Might that legend actually be true? Make my escape. Anything. We were only hired to deliver water and supplies to them. Forget excavation. They won't even let us get close to the camp where they're staying. This area used to be ravaged by frequent sandstorms. But it's been calm lately for some reason. They say that this was done by a single traveler? But seriously, is such a thing even humanly possible? Well, I found out everything I could. Is there anything that stands out to you? Ruin Wanderer. That's the first time I've heard that name. But that wreckage did seem a bit weird. It's a bit far away. And I can't really say for sure from this distance. Perhaps we should ask the villager from before about the legend first. Huh? What are you guys doing back here? <laughs> I wouldn't blame you for not knowing about it, youngsters. After all, it's a tale that's over a decade old. It's said that this monster, the Ruin Wanderer, traversed through various ruins for centuries. Many adventurers had claimed to see it while exploring. Some said that it was like a giant, while others said that it was like a beast. However, none knew why it wandered the ruins. Then, about ten years ago, we stopped hearing any news about it in Sumeru. No one has seen it since then, and the legend- You youngsters probably don't know about the Ruin Wanderer nowadays, but it was famous for centuries. Centuries? Impossible. I heard nothing about it back then. It could only have been around for a few decades at most. Wait. Back then? Indulge my curiosity for a moment. Why do you think that wreckage is the Ruin Wanderer? Well, I had also heard that secondhand from... You heard that nonsense from the Aramites after they got drunk, right? Hmm? Who are you? Madam Faruzan, it is a pleasure. I'm Raid, the one who organized this archaeological expedition. I'd heard of you at the Academia, but I didn't expect to run into you here. Truly, it is an honor. And this must be the famous traveler, I presume. What brings the two of you here? Have you found any special contraptions and relics in the ruins that you've been investigating? Ah, uh, I'm ashamed to say that we haven't found anything noteworthy, even though we've been investigating for a while now. Really? That Ruin Wanderer isn't noteworthy to you? <laughs> I'm afraid those are mere rumors. Really, I sometimes wish that those people would put as much effort into their work as they do into gossiping. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, you're right, sir. <clears throat> I'll get back to work now. The wise do not buy into rumors, so it is said. I believe that you too, Madame Farazan, do not put any stock into such baseless talk. It is also said that real knowledge shall come from practice. I can help you research the excavated relics and see if I can find out anything new about them. You can take credit for any new discoveries. I believe this offer to be sufficiently attractive. Uh, in truth, I could ask for nothing better than your help with our research. However, uh, you two must be tired after a long journey. I'd feel bad if I set you to work immediately. It's getting late and my subordinates and I are heading back to the camp to rest. Why don't you find a place to spend the night first? We can continue our discussion tomorrow. There are tents over there that the villagers occasionally use to rest. Uh, the condition is a bit simple, yes, but I hope you won't mind. 
Since you need to rest as well, let's do just that. is quite far away. Are they trying to prevent the villagers from eavesdropping on them? This suits us just fine, though. This way, they won't overhear our conversations either. Now, I have my suspicions about this archaeological expedition team and that machine wreckage. I only caught a quick glimpse, and it was from a distance. But based on the condition of the armor and joints, it didn't seem like something that had been lying around for centuries. At most, I'd estimate that it only stopped moving about a dozen years ago. Yes, the timing coincides with the spreading of the legend. Now, assuming that it really is the Ruin Wanderer, how do you suppose it was able to maintain a relatively good condition despite high-intensity operation over the course of several decades? That's right. Technically speaking, the module shouldn't be able to move such a large machine chassis. However, I'm basing my knowledge on the mechanical life forms I've seen before. Well, this was over a hundred years ago. It was a machine about the same size as Karkata, actually. It couldn't carry heavy objects or fight, and was only able to help me record some notes. It also helped me deliver letters home. I found it near the desert, which is why I wondered if there might be more restitution modules buried around here. Honestly, people in ancient times might have already solved the problem of providing enough power for all I know. 
still need to research this properly. Had I confronted Raid right there and then, he would have said that he couldn't tell that the machine was special. Then he'd just hand it over to the Academia obediently, and he'd get away scot-free. If the wreckage were to be handed to the Academia, it'd be much tougher for us to do research on it or get spare parts for Karkata. <sighs> anyway, we should figure out what they're planning before making our next move. They insisted that we should stay the night, which means if they're trying to pull a fast one on us, they're likely to try tonight. We must be vigilant. Are those sounds coming from the excavation site? <laughs> I knew they wouldn't be able to wait. They must be scared that we might discover something tomorrow. Not a single person guarding the campsite. This must be quite the manpower expenditure. I'll see if they left any clues behind at their camp. Keep watch and help me stall them if it comes to that, would you? All right. I'm counting on you. Why isn't the tent here yet? We need to switch it out tonight. It's still on the way. I'm afraid this is the first time we're delivering such a huge one. <sighs> you good-for-nothings are just a load of trouble, aren't you? We wouldn't have to deal with these interlopers if you had kept those lips of yours from flapping. Hurry up and hide our current tent and deliver the new one to me tonight, no matter what it takes. Huh? Who's there? Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm just a bit upset because my subordinates aren't doing their jobs properly. Uh, when did you get here? Ah, it's nothing. Just a tent. We didn't pack up all our tents from the last campsite. Some of them, along with a few people, have been left there. Someone damaged our current tent, so I'm trying to get my subordinates to get one from that previous campsite delivered here. The relics in the ruins are highly valuable, so I'm worried that treasure hoarders and bandits might try to steal them. Since the tent isn't here yet and I can't fall asleep, I came here to patrol. <laughs> well, these things are antiques after all. There will always be people interested in buying them. I hired so many people precisely because I was worried about that happening. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask, is the Academia really aware that you've traversed through the desert to come here in the middle of the night? Also, where's Farazan? Why isn't she with you? I'm right here. Also, you forgot to address me as Madam. <laughs> mm, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Madam Farazan. You were all making so much noise that I couldn't sleep, which is why I got the Traveler to find out what was going on. But for some reason, that one task took forever, so I came to check in on the situation. Ah, I'm very sorry for disturbing your rest. I'll tell my subordinates to be quieter on patrol. Good. Come on, Traveler. Let's head back. Yes. We came to check out the situation, didn't we? Well, we've already done that. We should get better rest so that we'll have energy to investigate tomorrow.
thanks for dealing with them. Now, I found something good on my end. These are the excavation records from their campsite. According to them, the ruins have been raided before, with numerous traps and contraptions having already been triggered. I also observed the wreckage up close earlier. The weathering is nowhere near as extensive as on the relics that have been buried for over a hundred years. There's no doubt that the wreckage in the ruins don't belong to the same era. Instead, it must have wandered into the ruins about a dozen years ago. It could have fallen into a trap or encountered a glitch within the ruins, remaining stationary like that until it was discovered recently. However, I still don't know why they'd want to hide it. I have no doubt that the researcher could definitely reach the same conclusion I did. The last few pages of the excavation records are written in code, which I still need time to decipher. The answer may lie within those pages. <laughs> it's just wordplay. And if anything, that's my wheelhouse. Hmm. Just a bit more. Ah. I see now. Help! Please help! Why are you running away? Come back! Protect me! What's that sound? The Ruin Wanderer? Reactivated? That's impossible! Is this the work of some kind of hidden mechanism? Never mind. We have to focus on saving lives first. I'll cover them. You go stall the Ruin Wanderer. What? It ignored the Traveler? Why is it chasing after us? What could have caused it to reactivate? And to give chase? Darn it! Hey, come on, you lot! It's clear that we can't escape, so let's just attack it! <sighs> it stopped? Hey, you guys! Get up there and tell me what's going on! But what if it suddenly moves? You... You good-for-nothings! Why is everyone I hired so useless? Move! I'll do it myself! <sighs> Looks like this thing's parts can't handle the load of functioning anymore after years of disrepair. <sighs> when it first reactivated, I was wondering if it'd be as amazing as the legends had pegged it to be. I didn't expect it to be so much weaker than it looks. How disappointing. Disappointing, you say? Now is that because you won't be able to sell it for much? Uh, Farusan, you may be my senior as an academia researcher, but that doesn't mean you get to slander me. You wrote these excavation records, did you not? Or perhaps calling it a ledger might jog your memory a bit better. Ah, uh, I... I don't recognize that thing. Ahem. January 3rd. Excavated five tents. January 5th. Three tents sold. Hm. January 10th. One special tent pre-sold. It must quickly be switched out with an old tent. Hm. You're supposed to be an archaeological expedition team, and yet here you are, secretly selling the relics and profiting from it. When you believed that you had found the wreckage of the Ruin Wanderer, you tried to switch in wreckage that you had excavated previously to pull the wool over the Academia's eyes. After all, there would probably be many wealthy buyers interested in purchasing the legendary Ruin Wanderer in the black market, yes? And then we arrived just before you could finish your work. That forced you to speed up your plan and you tried to complete the switch overnight before I could investigate the wreckage. <laughs> In your haste, however, you accidentally activated the Ruin Wanderer instead. Did I get that all right? I... I don't know what you're talking about. You lack the curiosity befitting a man of knowledge, nor do you have respect for mechanical life forms. You're not fit to be a researcher. Re Ridiculous! Curiosity? Respect? I'm not here to hear you preach. Hey! We're leaving. Mr. Raid! Behind you? Ah! Ah! Why is it moving again? Run! Huh? 
Some said that it was like a giant, while others said that it was like a beast. However, none knew why it wandered the ruins. Technically speaking, the module shouldn't be able to move such a large machine chassis. However, I'm basing my knowledge on the mechanical life forms I've seen before. Centuries? Impossible. I heard nothing about it back then. It could only have been around for a few decades at most. Why is it chasing after us? So you've been looking for me this whole time? Long time no see to Mimi. Dear Farazan, I hope you're doing well. It has been over 20 years since you went missing. People from the academia keep telling us to give up and that you're most likely dead. But somehow, I feel like you're still alive. Yes, that you live still in some corner of this world. You've always been persistent, able to shine no matter what situation you face. I believe that this persistence serves you well in surviving and finding your way home. Unfortunately, I likely won't be able to welcome you home when you do. I don't have much time left, and my reflexes have slowed. Others keep telling me to stop exploring ruins. Only Tamimi is still the same as before, always running off to places which you've been to. Your teacher and friends came up with an idea to remodel Tamimi, so it can search for you in our place. You didn't like coming home back then and would always get Tamimi to send a letter back. Now we're leaving a letter with Tamimi. I wonder if it'll ever be delivered to you. I don't know the answer to that question, but if you ever read this letter, I hope it'll be when you've already found your way home. I regret not being able to say this to you myself. But I'll, I'll still feel sincerely happy, happy for, for you, you, my dear daughter. daughter. Welcome home, Farwazan. Look at you, Tamimi. You've changed so much after all these years. Thank you for waiting for me all this time. I've safely received the letters. Your work is done now. You can sleep. To Mimi, the mechanical life form I encountered back then, when I would go on expeditions, it would follow me, take notes for me, and send my letters home. When I met with that accident, it was on the way to deliver a letter for me, I... I once thought that I'd never get to see it again. I didn't expect my teacher and others to remodel its self-repair function, upgrading it to self-learning. And so, 
In order to plumb the depths of unknown ruins and overcome dangerous traps, it repaired and modified itself using parts it found along the way. One decade of wandering became many, and soon... Tamimi, which used to be incapable of even moving heavy objects, became the Ruin Wanderer. Also, it could deliver these last letters from them to me. The strain to support such a huge body must have turned out to be too much for your heart, right? Even after the remodeling, its restitution module still can't function perfectly in perpetuity. It has been pushing itself beyond its limits over the past few decades. Just like a living being, mechanical life forms have a limited lifespan. It probably became trapped in the ruins all those years ago because its shelf life had run out. It most likely only reactivated because it detected my presence. And then it mustered up everything it had to deliver that last letter. Now, it can finally rest in peace. Tainari told you what happened to me, right? You don't have to apologize. It's not like this incident is a secret in the Academia. Besides, I've always treated it as a failed experiment. As a researcher, I must accept this result. However, finding out that so many people were affected by my failure does make me feel somewhat conflicted. Can you head back to Pardis DI first? We've been here for a while, and it's best not to make Kale and the rest worry. As for me, I want to stay with Tamimi for a bit longer. Just a bit. How was your journey through the desert? Wait, where's Madame Farazan? Oh no. She finally got to reunite with an old friend from a hundred years ago. But... As a researcher, she could perhaps accept it. However... As a friend, student, and a daughter, we should give her some time. Let's just wait for her here. And in the future, I hope that we can be here to support her as her new friends.
welcoming party. We've all been waiting for you, Madam Farazan. That's more like it. Now, here are some components I brought back from the desert. Switch these out with the ones Karkata is using right now, and it'll be back in ship shape. Huh? Why do you all look so solemn? Come now. Liveliness befits youngsters more. Madam Farazan, did these parts come from... <laughs> Come now, I thought that you must have encountered some major problem. This isn't something you have to worry about. Well, it looks like you already know everything, but no need to feel bad. Like I said before, as researchers, we must learn to accept our failures. Tamimi had been operating beyond capacity for a century, and I'm unable to repair it with my current abilities. Not even with these parts. It would thus be much better to use them to extend Karkata's lifespan. As a senior, it is only right that I do something for the people who come after me. That holds true for both researchers and machines. Besides, I didn't say that I would be giving you these parts for free. They will only be used for Karkata temporarily. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to help me with my research. I'll be sure to revive Tamimi once I've fully deciphered and replicated the creations of the ancient civilization. Alright, I'll do my best to help. Me too! Although, I'm not sure if I'll be much help. Thank you. If they could remodel Tamimi successfully even back then, there's no reason why we won't be able to do even better. And when that day comes, I'll be sure to say, Welcome home, Tamimi.
If only I...
Some more fortune. Stand with me. Shelter, quick! Watering works on plants, but not people. And away I go! Ha! Ha!
This realm is truly beginning to thrive. I cannot help but be stirred. If you ever have... This realm is truly beginning to thrive. I cannot help but be stirred. If you ever have any questions... Short and squat wooden houses. Sparsely scattered. Sometimes, a village like this can be easier to guard than a city. When hunting demons, I just want bystanders out of the area, so I can focus on fighting. So this is what human construction looks like up close.
kitchen here is furnished just like Wang Shu Inn's. Looking at the ingredients here, could you recreate that dish I'm familiar with? I assume you know the one. Just an idle thought. I'm not expecting anything. Just coming up with a new dish. Don't worry, nothing too strange. I love it! Very cozy. And there are so many new and interesting things I've never seen before. Just a shame more of them are potential ingredients. <laughs> but really, don't worry about it. Combining existing ingredients in new ways already allows for countless variations in flavor. The trick is to keep playing with different pairings. I've got plenty of new concepts to try out. But, um, what would really make a difference is if you could taste test them and give me some feedback. Uh, really? Great! I'll get cooking. It's you. Did something happen? Uh, there are no ominous things here. It's a quiet place. But... It's too comfortable. I will protect this haven, for your sake. I know that I can never have a peaceful and carefree life. Still, your kindness is accepted. Astra Abyssosk. Welcome. Thank you. 
Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Did you hear about the prophecy in Fontaine? Welcome. How can I help you? Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. The prophecy in Fontaine? Oh no, what's happened now? Did you hear about the prophecy in Fontaine? The neighboring nation of Liyue has the most prosperous commercial port in all of Tibet. Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. The neighboring nation of Liyue has the most prosperous commercial port in all of Tibet. Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Did you hear about the prophecy in Fontaine? Oh no, what's happening now? The neighboring nation of Liyue has the most prosperous commercial port in all of Tibet. Ah, ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Ah, ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Did you hear about the Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Ancient alchemy truly <sighs> is fascinating. Did you hear about the prophecy in Fontaine? <laughs> the neighboring nation of Liyue has the most prosperous commercial port in all of Tibet. Ah, ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. The 
neighboring nation of Liyue. <sighs> Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Snatch Cliff is known for its views. Uh, ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Ah, 
ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. The neighboring nation of Liyue has the most prosperous commercial port in all of Tibet. I guess I'll post a commission at the ah. adventurer skills. You're also here for Mondstadt's wine, aren't you? Ah. Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Welcome. How can I help you? And a radish veggie soup. Ancient Welcome. alchemy How truly is you? fascinating. And a rash veggie soup. What else are you from Mostad's wine? What happened? Ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. Ancient alchemy truly is fast.
Why would anyone want... Oh, forget it. It's not my case.
delved into destiny.
useless. I call treasure.
me a growth serum? Yeah. Could it be true? What I've heard... Could it be true? What I've heard... Could it be true? What I've heard... <sighs> Could it be 
be true. What I've heard. Could it be true? What I've heard? Could it be true? What I've heard? Could it be true? What I've heard? Could it be true, what I've heard? Could it be true, what I've heard? Morning. The boss tells me that both new and returning customers have nothing but good things to say about you.
I have to admit, I was a little worried about throwing you right into the deep end, but it looks like you've got what it takes to handle the day-to-day -day here. So it should be plain sailing. Well, just as long as we don't run into any extremely picky customers with unreasonably specific requests. Oh, have you had someone like that before? Of course. The worst are those old scholars who have barely cooked a day in their life, but think reading a stack of books on the topic makes them the expert. They criticize you for no reason, claiming your cooking method isn't faithful to the original, or that the flavor profile isn't authentic because you used an ingredient that wasn't in their beloved centuries-old version of the recipe. This is Wang Shu Hmm. It does have the look and feel of a time-honored establishment. Oh, innkeeper! We'll have each of your signature dishes, please, as fast as you can serve them. The most expensive ones. Farzan! Oops, uh, Madam Farzan! <laughs> oh my! Traveler, Paimon! Whatever are you doing here? We could ask you the same thing! Where'd you suddenly get the funds to go sightseeing? And to order the most expensive things on the menu? <laughs> I'm not here to sightsee. Exemplary scholars like myself are highly sought after by cruise operators in need of an onboard consultant as they travel the world. Uh, uh, Madam Farzan, please... Oh, slow down. Oh, none of us slept last night. How come Madam Farzan still has so much energy? Oh, if she's really over a hundred years old, I don't understand how she keeps going. She's been like this ever since I told her I'd be paying the expenses. Layla! And... Dory? Huh. Never would have bet on this combination. Temporary chef, huh? Wow. No rest for the wicked. Well, if the chef here is trusting you to run his whole kitchen, then I've got no doubt we're in for some authentic Leoa specialties. So, why are you all in Leoa again? Something about being an onboard consultant? I got my hands on a new boat from Fontaine a while ago, equipped with cutting edge navigation technology. If we manage to spread the word, it could have huge business potential. Right now, we're doing some test runs. We sailed from Port Ormos to Rito, then from Rito to Liyue Harbor. Next, we're planning to go to Dornman Port. Oh, Madam Farazan and me were hired to fine-tune the compass and other equipment. We sailed around the Sea of Clouds all of last night to put the system through some stress testing. Time for which they'll both be fairly compensated. They're both here willingly. The contract is crystal clear on that. You really cover all your bases, don't you? Let Paimon guess. Paying the expenses is part of the compensation, isn't it? No wonder Madame Farozan is going for all the most expensive dishes. <laughs> it's not every day someone tells you to order whatever you like. Now, first up, we'll have the... <clears throat> Farzan, uh, Madam Farzan, that is. While I am more than happy to treat you both to the most expensive dishes on the menu, we must remember that most expensive does not always mean best. I've heard that the most expensive dishes in Liyue are usually either seafood-based or take an exceptionally long time to prepare. Now, I don't know about you two, but after so many days at sea, I don't think I can so much as look at another piece of seafood again for at least the foreseeable future. Huh. 
That's actually a good point. Not to mention that poor Layla here looks like she's about to faint from hunger. Huh? Oh, that's not because of hunger. Surely the wise and virtuous Madame Farazan could not bear to watch her poor students sit here and waste away. Oh, well, of course I care about my students' well-being, but why do I feel like I'm being tricked? So, let's not order anything that'll take too long to prepare. Aside from that, and seafood, we'll take whatever other expensive dishes you have. Over to you, Traveler! So, expensive, but no seafood, and nothing that takes too long to cook. That rules out pretty much our entire menu. <sighs> Do these people get a kick out of being impossible to please? Ugh, that Dory! Is she doing this on purpose? <laughs> this isn't Liuli Pavilion or Xinyua Kiosk. This is Wangshu Inn. We don't stock up on rare and exotic ingredients. We only get them in if someone puts in a special reservation. <sighs> well, if we're stuck with regular ingredients and we're on a time limit, there's only one way to bump up the price. And that's by cooking a dish that uses the chef's expertise and creativity to the fullest. As it happens, I know a recipe for something called trembling strings and rushing reeds. It can be whipped up quickly with what we already have in the kitchen. One plate usually goes for 30,000 mora. Quick doesn't have to mean quick and easy. To perfect this dish, you need expert knife work and very precise control over the heat. You have to finely slice several different types of meat into fine threads, knead them together into strips, then gently stir fry them in the pan. What you end up with is a whole variety of flavors that come through layer by layer. This dish is unique in offering a harmonious blend of multiple kinds of meat, all cooked to perfection, while still bursting with their own distinct flavors. Do it right, and you've got a culinary masterpiece in your hands. But if you botch it, it's just a bunch of meat thrown on a plate. Oh, Paima gets it now! So this dish gets its value not from the ingredients, but the chef's expertise! Now, don't worry. I can take care of the kneading and other prep work for you. You just focus on bringing it all together. Believe in yourself. You can do this! And if you mess it up, Paima will still be happy to eat it!
Ooh, smells delightful! Oh, we meant to ask, have you two eaten breakfast yet? If not, why don't you join us at the table? Uh, did Dory just offer us a free meal? When did she become so generous? <laughs> Let's not forget that the biggest business deals are Always settled over a meal. Come on, come on, come on, sit down and join us. Everyone dig in. This dish looks simple enough, and I did my research, so surely it can't cost all that much. Worst case scenario, maybe 10,000 mora? This dish had better be worth working overtime all night for. Well, traveler. This is the moment of truth. Oh, so tired. So sleepy. I just want to eat up and get to bed. Is this... foul? Oh, wait. No, the texture is more like shroom boar. There's a different flavor in every bite. And the discerning palate might detect a hint of something smoked, too. Quite marvelous. How is this made? Ham? But I don't see any ham anywhere. Oh. Ha-ha! <laughs> so you've noticed. Yep, every single strip is kneaded from several different kinds of meat. Paimon and Yanxiao put in a lot of effort to make it just right. Uh, so I'm not an expert or anything, but don't different meats have different cooking times? Uh, uh how is everything in this dish cooked to perfection? This dish really is one of a kind. That makes the whole trip worth it. By the way, does this special dish have a name? Ah! Paimon forgot to mention that part. The dish is called Trembling Strings and Rushing Reeds, alluding to the way that the different threads of meat are woven together. And also... The complex layers of flavor, yes? Akin to the harmonies of a musical ensemble. The name, if I'm not mistaken, is a Leo idiom that evokes a vigorous orchestral performance featuring both stringed and wind instruments playing together. Mm, quite an apt name for this dish. Uh, how did you know all that? 
every student has to master at least 20 languages before they graduate. Wait, is that not a requirement anymore? Uh, huh? Oh, that used to be a thing? Oh! Hyman almost forgot that you're also from Harabitat. So, um, anyway, how much does this dish cost? Oh, don't worry, not too much. That'll be, uh, 30,000 more, please and thank you. Thirty thousand? <sighs> uh, about that, Paimon, traveler, I merely invited you to join us at the table, did I not? I don't believe I committed to paying for you. So, perhaps we could split the bill accordingly? Oh, Paimon knew it was too good to be true. Merchant, you've got a reputation to uphold. Ugh, but every single Mora matters, you know? <sighs> all right, all right. I'll just consider that the cost of learning about this dish. Once I'm back in Sumeru, I'll be sure to find someone to help me recreate the dish. And then, and then, I'll make it all back. <sighs> I feel so much better now that I've gotten some food in me. Delicious food really does wonders for one's spirit. Uh, <laughs> uh, my advisor said that young people shouldn't stay cooped up in the academia all the time. Uh, they told me that I should take the chance to get out and see the stars in other skies. Oh, uh, maybe I can think of it as my first internship experience? Oh, but it sure is exhausting. Hmm. Oh. How should I justify a high price tag for a dish without any fancy ingredients? Huh. Maybe start by giving it a fancy sounding name? Uh, <laughs> uh, I should have known you'd see through me. Everyone was exhausted and seasick when I made the offer last night, so I figured they probably wouldn't be able to eat all that much today. Well, you saw how that turned out. I tried placing some limitations on the order to keep costs under control, but you still found a way around my schemes. <sighs> That's what I get for not thoroughly researching the market beforehand. Hey, you're not even paying those too much of a salary. Just treat them fairly next time and don't be so stingy. Well, yeah, but that's why Paimon's qualified to talk about this. Even though I didn't get to try Adeptus Temptation or Bamboo Shoot Soup, this trembling strings and rushing reeds was still quite impressive. Thank you for making it. Well, about that. Even though newfangled contraptions are hardly my cup of tea, Dory's offer was quite enticing. She said that every time we stopped at a new harbor, I'd be free to go and pick out some ancient books at the market and bring them back to Sumeru. <laughs> I couldn't resist an offer like that. 
So I offered to join for the lowest possible pay to undercut all my Kasharawar competitors. We're off to a good start this morning. Keep up the good work. I'm counting on you.
Answer from this world? Let me scry! The bond is strong!
Truly an extra slice of joy.
destined to destiny. Decided by destiny. Yeah, lament! <sighs> Worthless! Answer from this world? the road.
Let me scry. Useless. Ha! Ha! Spring forth! Lightning Sheriff! Decided by destiny! Evil conquering! Tear! Worthless! Tear! Worthless!
yielding to destiny. Useless.
Let's light it up! Dare to mess with me?
Blade is strong. Delve into <sighs> death. A reward on the road. I'll keep this close. The bond is strong! This is 
Happy Scrub! Lament! Worthless! Useless! Tear! Worthless! Stand with me! Shadows of Fate! Tear! All yours. Answer from this world? gonna get fired. <laughs> Thank you. 
Reward on the road. Answer from this world? Yeah. 
me. <laughs> Accomplished. Can I go back and sleep now?
like I should have just stayed in bed today. I should be to a growth spurt by now. Together, two heads are better than one.
What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is. what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? Thank mm -hmm. you. Something on your mind again? Let's work through it together. Two heads are better than one. If you're not sure what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? Something on your mind again? Let's work through it together. Two heads are better than one.
if you're not sure what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? 